Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto, and bring out a bite-sized piece. So today, just like the thumbnail and the title suggests, there is one crypto asset that I'm pretty sure is going to outperform everything that I currently own. So first, we're going to take a look at uh, some market data on-chain analysis, and this is kind of new-ish. We started this yesterday. We're going to take a look at that one crypto asset class. We're going to take a look at uh, how Bitcoin Cash is doing good. And we're going to wrap it all up with the opposite end of the spectrum called Masterworks. And then uh, I'm just going to give you a little snippet about uh, World Mobile Token at the very end. So let's just dive right in, shall we? So today is a pretty nice day. Thursday, beautiful day out here. And uh, look at that. Total market cap. Let me bring this down a little bit. Uh, 2.3 trillion. And we're down 0.2%. That's okay. Uh, the market has to breathe a little bit. But the Bitcoin daily sentiment is still 65 over 100. And of course, we're using Trade the Chain. If you want to use sentiment analysis, there's a link in the description. It does all the uh, different crawling and uh, data analysis for you. But uh, here's what we got. So in the last 24 hours, we're looking at uh, a decline of Bitcoin of 1%. But who cares? Because in seven days, check this out. In seven days, 24% for Bitcoin. Pretty good. I mean, as compared to traditional finance. Ethereum was up 20% in a week, 0.49%. In the last, uh, I don't know, 24 hours, Cardano's up at 230, uh, Solana's down, Polkadot's up, uh, you know, all over the board, but really it's kind of stagnant. A little bit of a pullback, Avalanche negative 5%. But if we take a look at the seven day, it looks pretty gosh darn good. And I will take that because we can't just keep going up forever. I'll take a little bit of a pullback. I'm good with that. Uh, if you're big into trading and want to take a look at a little sentiment, let's take a look. Look at these coins. Skycoin, Beam, Troy, Voyager, huh, Credit Towing, and BTU Protocol. I sure hope that one goes up. And uh, next hour or so, you can expect that these are the price uh, uh, fluctuations. So go ahead and give that, a, give that a whirl. But what I really want to do is just uh, get into... First of all, a little uh, market data, because um, this was went over pretty well, actually, uh, yesterday when we started everything else. So we always start with the market. But uh, now we're just going to go over just a couple of pieces to see, give us a broader view of what's going on in our marketplace. So uh, right now, total liquidation is not too bad. Uh, we've got uh, the largest single liquidation order happened on uh, uh, OKX. It's only 1.3 million. Not a big deal. Not like 100 million or billions like before. Uh, in the last 24 hours, people have lost around 195 million, either going too short or too long. And here's the longs and the shorts. Uh, nothing really fantastic right there. However, this was interesting to me. So we're taking a look at on-chain analysis. I've got three that I like to look at. All miners outflow, meaning how much of the miners are actually selling, the exchange reserves as far as Bitcoin and Ethereum. And if you notice down here, let me blow this up so you can see it. We're seeing that there is an uptick of miners selling their Bitcoin, which makes a lot of sense. So when you see miners sell Bitcoin, just know the, the price is going to go down because sometimes they do hold quite a bit. The exchange reserves, since these miners are selling, I think other people took profits. Look at this. Over here, of course, people were starting to accumulate. So the reserves on the exchanges went down, price goes up. Over here, the exact opposite is kind of happening. Well, actually, it's not true. Uh, they accumulated, but we're going down and up, down and up. And now we're kind of going on an uptick as far as price and a little bit as far as the reserve. So if people keep selling, hey, they can only sell so much. And then as far as like Ethereum, this was also interesting. Same type of thing. We're going down. Then we hit a floor as far as the price. And then we just kind of skyrocketed up a little bit for price. But just be aware that the exchanges are having more uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin on them because people are selling and taking profits. And then also, this was also interesting, is that as we move forward, I'm interested to see the correlations between our crypto market and the traditional market. So just so you know, you can find this on TradingView. S&P 500, uh, it took a dip yesterday and everybody's like, oh, I have things uncorrelated, this is fantastic. Well, it's up today, so whatever. NASDAQ's up, Dow's up, Russell 200's up, US dollar index down, not surprising, and Bitcoin index is down. So um, not so much of a little bit of a correlation, but uh, perhaps, but it uh, looks like the traditional market is doing pretty well. And this, the Pi Cycle Top Indicator, which is uh, something I really should be looking at every single day, because this is when the 111 day moving average goes over the 350 day, and it's only happened four times, okay? So the four times it's happened, is right here that was in 2013 when uh bitcoin was a whopping 130 bucks and they crossed over and then we uh took a big dip and then it happened again in 2013 so people say oh it can't happen twice in a year well it did so it happened twice there the next time it happened when it crossed over was right around 2017 took a big dump 
And then of course we were in crypto winter. And then over here, it happened again in April. And people were freaking out because they think, oh, that's it, but it's not. It's uh, it, it happened twice in 2013. I think it might happen twice in uh, 2021, but only time will tell. So that is the state of the market in a nutshell. Let's jump into today's top story, which is the one crypto asset. Here it is, this thing, the Doge Pound. And uh, these are all NFTs. This is what is gonna beat the pants off your entire portfolio. Sorry to tell you, but it is true. And it's already probably done that. Uh, NFTs are a big mystery to most, mystery to me. I'm still trying to, uh, to figure it out, but uh, I can kind of see where things are going. So you're like, well, why would anybody uh, own digital art? Well, why would anybody own digital currency? Well, here we are owning Bitcoin and Ethereum and XRP and Cardano. So is it really a stretch of the imagination that people are going to get into a digital art piece that they can actually prove? Anyhow, so with the Doge Pound and what is going on here, uh, let's just open this up and buy on OpenSea. That's going to bring us up to the page of where we can buy these uh, goofy little pictures. And guess how much they are? That's right. They are uh, 4 ETH or they are 3.58 ETH. And uh, that is uh, how much they're going for most of them. 3.58, 5.2, blah, blah, blah. What the heck? 45 ETH? Sweet Mary Joseph. That's a lot. So the thing is why? Before I get into the why, let's click on the Doge Pound and see, look a little bit of data in here. So this is the Doge Pound and what's been happening. And just so you know, I kind of, I was talking to a friend today and he calls, uh, he calls NFTs ICOs 2.0. And I think he's right. But there is a lot of things going on. Look at this right here. So you take a look at the Doge Pound, the price when this kind of just kind of started rumbling. July 13, 2021, the average price was 0 0.06. 0 0.06 of Ethereum. What the heck is 0 0.06? Well, back then, I can tell you it was a lot less than what it is, but let's just say it was 216, whatever, right? It wasn't 216, it was probably like 120 bucks, something like that, or maybe even less. But now what we have, is the floor price uh, being about 3.6, somewhere around there, or the, excuse me, the average price, 3.9, let's just round up, because I like round numbers. So today, that would be worth almost $15,000. And that is in, that's since July. So July, let me do some quick math. August, September, October, eh, two and a half months. Okay, so you go from 120 bucks to $15,000. Uh, that's not too shabby. And uh, that is what is happening around in the NFT uh, area and what is happening. Also, I want to take a look at this real quick. Let's just go to OpenSea and I'm going to click on, where is it? Stats. And I'm going to look at activity. Oops, stats and rankings, excuse me. And what I want to take a look at here is all the different NFTs that are being sold and how much they are being sold for and the volume. So CryptoPunks are gone, okay? And that is, geez, that was the volume was 20,000 uh, Ethereum. Uh, crypto Toads, the volume was 16,000 Ethereum in seven days. This right here is the new place where people are making a ton of cash, but it is a mystery. Why are they doing it? Why do people come in here and which ones are valuable and which ones are trash? The same thing was said for ICOs. And really, in all honesty, I think a lot of the times you can just throw a dart and uh, things will be okay. However, there are so many things going on, but this would be the place to start if it was me. Investment opinion, not investment advice. If I'm looking at this and going, which ones do I really want to get into? Well, I would probably take a look here and take a look at the volume. Also, I'll probably take a look at the community and see how active they are. And I'd see actually what they do. Well, there's a doge pound, look at that. Down 16%, probably peaked out. But in that short amount of time, in seven days, 640%. And then on and on we go. And the prices, you can take a look at all those things. So that is essentially uh, the, the piece of why these are going to outperform everything in your portfolio and probably everything in my portfolio, just the truth. And the real question is, why do people own these? Well, there's a couple of reasons. And uh, talking to a friend again, he just says, hey, it all comes down to, you know, at first it was, let's just have some kind of digital art, just sell art. That sounds good. And the next part was, well, let's, uh, let's put it in the hands of as many people as we possibly can and just see what happens. And then that happened. And then all of a sudden, now it's kind of getting to the point of, let's see what kind of utility we can have. And that is a, a, another big step up. So like with uh, the Doge Pound there, when you buy one of those Doge Pound, you get like a twofer, you get like a 
a doge and a dog or a, a puppy or whatever else, right? So great. And then other platforms, you can actually launch your own NFTs. And then also on some of these NFTs, uh, they actually come in, come with tokens, which you can stake and you can earn yield off of that. Do those tokens do anything? Probably not. They probably don't do anything. And will they be around in the next uh, year or two years? Probably not. But just like the ICOs, 99 point something percent are going to be gone. But I think there are some real gems out there. And what I want to do so I'm going to start bringing on people on this channel to give us the best information that we can possibly get as to which types of projects to get our hands into, hopefully a little bit early, and then go from there. How to buy, how to sell, secondary market, so on and so forth. So if that sounds like something you'd like to be interested in, let me know in the comment section. But that takes care of that. And lastly, I will just say this. If we're taking a look at uh, how things have gone, I mean, we just saw Doge Pound, right, which was pretty crazy. If we take a look at that and then just add that up to, uh, this is Charlie uh, Baleo, and uh, he always gives the best uh, uh, information as far as data analytics. And he says, look, the returns of the last decade has been this. Bitcoin, pretty good. 1,150, 1 million, excuse me, 150,000 percent. Tesla, 14,000 percent. NVIDIA, blah, blah, blah. Amazon, pretty good for the last 10 years. Uh, you know, what, 10x, 1,000x, no, 1,358%. Apple, 1,000%, Google, bonds, a whopping 34%. That's just more for safety. And then gold, plus 1%. You'll never get rich with gold. I'm sorry to tell you, those days are gone. But I hold gold and silver and Bitcoin. I don't understand why people don't. So that is what is going on. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. And this will go pretty quick. And we're just going to talk about, oops, Bitcoin Cash does good. So... We talk about one NFT project and all the money you can make. Check out, check this out. This was from Bitcoin News, and it says smart BCH poolside puffers NFT collection sells out in three days, but 100% of proceeds goes to the orphanage in Vietnam. Who doesn't like that? So poolside puffers, they're 2,100 unique generative art collectibles, and this is what they what they garnished. They said each puffer sold for 0 0.0035 Bitcoin Cash per unit which is roughly just over two bucks using the exchange rate, which you think about it, they sold 2,000 $2, again, quick math, roughly 4,000 bucks. And that's going to, uh, where's that going to? Uh, an orf in Vietnam. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna go a lot farther than say New York. Uh, Puffer is a friendly art project to introduce Bitcoin Cash and wider cryptos to the new EVM sidechain, Smart BCH. BCH, which is enabling Ethereum smart contract capabilities. I'm like, what the heck? So if you don't know, because I didn't know, um, smart BCH is this. Uh, smart BCH is a side chain for Bitcoin Cash and has an aim to explore possibilities compatible with Ethereum's EVM, Web3 API, and high throughput for DApp. So look at Bitcoin Cash making a move. So uh, I like these types of stories, especially when uh, things are giving back and when uh, people are just making you know, a boatload of money for uh, no good reason. But uh, yeah. Good for these guys who did that. Anyhow, let's move on to our last piece, which kind of goes in the uh, opposite way of what we just did. We talked about digital art. Now let's talk about uh, real art. And this was from TechCrunch. They talk about Masterworks, raises $110 million to sell physical art, not NFTs. And just so you know, they raise $110 million in Series A funding at a valuation north of $1 billion. Why do I bring this up to you? And it's because of this, I have gotten invested into Masterworks. And what they're trying to do, or what they're doing, uh, is that they are selling fractions, fractionalized artwork. And uh, what, they, what the data that I see, and you can go to this website, there's a link in the description, and you can figure it all out. Some people just wanna do digital art. Some people say, you know what? I want to get into another asset class, which is uncorrelated to everything out there. And they talk about the, the data points here as far as like when the 2008 crash happened, art really didn't take a hit. When other big things happened, art didn't take a hit because guess what? They're dealing with multi-million pieces of artwork and the ultra rich don't really care about what's going on in the normal day-to-day -day doldrum lives of us because they got a ton of money. Now, uh, this is all uh, up to them and you can see exactly how they do these things and again links in the description But there's two different sides of it. It's not how much you make. It's how much you keep and to me This is just another asset class to consider investing into that is what I've done But this is investment opinion 
on investment advice. Oh, and before I forget, I almost forgot. Uh, World Mobile token. So just real quick, uh, we already talked about Masterworks, World Mobile. Um, there's been a lot of questions about how to stake World Mobile. I had a meeting with the team over at World Mobile uh, last night, and they talked to me about the whole process of how to stake and the things that are going on. And I learned some pretty interesting things about uh, their partnership between them and uh, Cardano, Charles Hoskinson, and the whole thing. And I can tell you that um, they let some things slip, and I can't tell anybody anything because I don't want to get sued. But uh, I will just tell you this, Cardano is making some pretty big plays. And if they can do what I think they're gonna do, it's gonna be a pretty uh, exciting time for everybody, at least for Cardano holders. Okay, and that's it. So look, if you made all the way in, I wanna say thanks so much, I appreciate it. If you like that type of video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive on this channel, and that is it for today. So thanks for hanging out with me, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one when we start to talk about more. NFTs and all those great things.